Sauerbraten. Several people have asked me to make it. Sauerbraten can be translated to sour roast and it's a very German dish and it takes a little bit of preparation because the roast has to be in a marinade for five to seven days before it can make the actual dish. But I will show you everything step by step in this video. So here are my ingredients. I have two bay leaves, five juniper berries, ten peppercorns, two allspice um, corns, two cloves, some root celery, a piece of leek, carrot, two garlic cloves, a large onion or two medium-sized one, and the actual meat. And for the meat, you don't use um, meat that is already very soft uh, by nature, like you wouldn't use a filet for that. You use a kind of meat that is a little more chewy on the chewy side usually. And because it's in the marinade for so long, it will be very soft and nice later when you prepare the meat. So don't worry about that. I have a round roast here and uh, you can either use a round roast or a piece of from the shoulder of a cow. So this is beef. It's um, what we usually use for uh, sauerbraten, but uh, there are also recipes in the past where we used to make this with horse meat, which I believe is not in everyone's favor, and not in mine at least, so I'll stick to the beef. And you will also need 400 milliliters of a red wine, and I would recommend you use a good wine for that. Don't go cheap, it will not pay off. And you will need 200 milliliters of red wine vinegar. And for the quantities, like always, you will find the printable recipe on the blog and there you can also switch from the metric system to the US customary system. So you have the cup and ounces there and can translate it to what you're used to. I will start with preparing the vegetables. So I'm going to peel the um, root celery. And this is probably the one thing that you will have the most trouble to get. I had to drive to a different location to get it, but I guess it depends on where you live. Here in Texas it's not very common though. So I'm basically um, cutting everything into smaller pieces and I throw this in a pot and the pot should be large enough to hold the roast so you want to measure a little bit if the meat is fitting into the pot. So and I'm adding the roast now, place it here, oh, let's take some of the veggies out. Okay, now I cover this with the liquids. Oops, I'm making a mess here. And I put all the spices in here. So and as you can see here, um, the meat is not completely covered in the wine. So I really want that to be submerged. So I'm just adding a little more of my wine. And that's basically it. So I'm going to cover this now and put it into the fridge where it will stay for five to seven days.
But before I put it into the fridge and continue with the video next time, I want to tell you something else. So there is a recipe for Sauerbraten that one of my viewers sent to me. And I have had a hard time to decide whether I should make the traditional Sauerbraten that I know or the one that um, this guy uh, sent to me because the one that he sent to me sounds very delicious and he speaks very high of it. So it was a little bit hard to decide which one I would make. And then I decided that most of the time people want me to do the traditional stuff. Uh, although the other recipe is not completely different, but it has some very interesting ingredients. And so I decided I will make the video with this recipe, but on the blog post, I will share both recipes. So you will find the recipe for this sour roast, and you will also find underneath the other recipe that I really want to share with you because it was so highly recommended and it looks really like it's gonna be a very delicious pot roast. So after a week, it's finally time to make the Sauerbraten, the Sauer roast. And you can see it's still covered with the marinade. It looks very nice. It's been in the fridge for this entire week. Um, what else I do need is some onions. So two onions in this case, I already chopped them. They make me cry so badly that I had to cover them. Then you need some frying oil. And what you also need is something that you can substitute for Honigbrot. Honigbrot is an ingredient that we usually would put in here. Honey bread. It's a very certain kind of a sweet, kind of bitter bread. It's, it's uh, hard to describe. It's something I might cover in next December's recipes, but I don't have it now and you most likely don't have it either. So instead of that, I'm using ginger snaps. You'll need 100 grams of these. Then also you need some honey and 200 milliliters of beef broth. And last, you will also need some raisins. And you probably know from previous videos that we are all not big fans of raisins in this family. However, they are necessary in this recipe for the taste. You can still pick them out later. I first have to take out the meat from the marinade. And I can already feel it's very, very soft. So let me carefully take this out without making a big mess. All right. And I will have to keep the marinade. I need it later. And I will just put it through the sieve. I don't need the vegetables. Okay. Now remove all the vegetables here from the roast and now i have to pat it dry so i'm using some kitchen towels for that i've heated some oil here and now it's time to roast the roast from all sides so i'm putting it in here And I want to brown it from all sides. Once the roast has browned from all sides, I'm adding the onions. And I let them fry a little bit. And then I'm adding the marinade. So that makes less noise. I'm also adding the broth. And two tablespoons of honey. And I'm using eye measure here. Okay, so this has to boil now at medium temperature for two hours. I'm putting the lid on it and I will in between check a little bit just to make sure that it's well covered and still boiling. After two hours of boiling, it looks like this. 
And we're almost done. It's, it's a really simple recipe. So now I have to take out the roast and work on the sauce. So I put the roast over here and cut it and let it rest. Okay, so now I'm putting the cookies, the ginger snaps, into the sauce. And as mentioned before, usually I would take something that's called honey bread, honigbrot. Okay. And I let this boil a little bit so that the cookies soak and crumble. Just a little bit. I'll give it a few minutes and then I will blend it with my immersion blender. Okay, so I will now blend this and turn this into a very nice gravy. All right, now the raisins. And I bring this back to a boil for a little bit so that the raisins soak in the sauce. And the meat can continue to rest a little bit. And if you want to know what kind of sides are good for this dish, usually people eat it with a side of potato dumplings and with some red cabbage. And that's what's back here on the stove waiting for me. Uh, another good side would be just boiled potatoes or spätzle. Uh, for vegetables, you can also use uh, broccoli or cooked carrots for this dish. It's um, I would I would always try to choose something colorful since the dumplings or potatoes are or also the spätzle are very very white and, and the sauce is very brown. So something that has a little more adds a little more color to the dish is perfect in my opinion. And you can see that the sauce has become much more creamy than it was before. And I will taste it now a little bit and see if I want to add a little bit of the honey or some salt or pepper. So let's see. This is very nice. So this sauce is supposed to be somewhat sour. It's called sauerbraten, which means sour roast. So duh, it has to be a little bit of sour. But if you feel like it has too much acid, then you can always add a little bit of cream. And I think that's what I'm doing here. I think it's a little bit too sour and I want to smoothen it a little bit. Okay, let's give it another try. Perfect. This is just how it's supposed to taste. It's wonderful. Yes, yeah, so this is a very simple recipe. I think you noticed there's not really much to do. It's a lot of waiting and it's a long time for cooking. But other than that, there's really no big science to it. It's very easy. I let the meat rest for a little longer and then I will cut it into thick slices and prepare a dish that I will make some photos of. If you like this recipe, try it out. Give me a thumbs up, hit the bell button, subscribe to my channel to never miss any of my recipes and stay tuned watch the pictures that I'm making and the next upcoming video. Thanks for watching!